Shares of Facebook, again, lower this morning by about 2.5%, coming off a week that our next guest called, quote, biblically bad, like the book of Job, if his friends had had a point about him being to blame. Uh, that week saw two high-profile executives depart Facebook in the opening of a criminal investigation by federal prosecutors into the company's data deals with its peers. Recode co-founder and New York Times contributor Kara Swisher back with us. Uh, Kara, good morning. So w what Hi. makes this time different for Facebook? Is it the, the fact that this is a criminal investigation? Is it the departure of, hey, one of the absolutely most visible executives there, Chris Cox? Well, both of those things. I think a criminal investigation sort of ups the ante. I, already there's going to be these all the lawsuits, and obviously just this weekend, state attorney generals are going to are going to weigh in. There's all kinds of things coming at them, but a criminal investigation is much more difficult to deal with, whether they knew what they were doing around the data deals. Now, then, if they start those, there's other things they can look at intent around the Russian elections. If there's emails, it just beca becomes. You know, it just sort of snowballs on itself, and it gets very serious very quickly. And then this weekend, after I wrote this, obviously, they had this uh, this terrible tragedy happening where this killer was broadcasting his murders on Facebook. And while they did everything possible to take them down, I think they took 1.5 million videos down, and that's 80% of them through AI, it still left up 20% of them, which is hundreds of thousands of videos. And so it'll call attention to what Facebook is, which is just a, this platform that is uncontrollable. And I think that's just going to be a problem for them going forward. Well, what, what can they do? I mean, we seem to be going through all these weird stages of Facebook hate, uh, and some of it seemingly uh, irrational. I mean, there was the blame Sheryl Sandberg phase, which seems to have ended. Uh, now the fingers are pointing to, to Mark Zuckerberg and the decisions that he's making, sort of uh, taking different pieces of the company and trying to force them together. I mean, how do they work their way out of this? Well, I don't know. Maybe they don't have these products. These products are not uh, manageable in some ways. I mean, it's an interesting question because what they've done is unleashed products out on the onto the world and don't have control of them. And I appreciate that they've been trying to take these videos down. Same thing at YouTube. But what they've done is they've allowed an unfettered platform of broadcast around the world. Now, is that a good thing? They're going to be regulated for this. This is the thing. And so the question is, how do you regulate them? How do you keep innovation going? And how do you you don't want to protect people. You're not like their parent, but at the same time, this is an unfettered platform that is uncontrollable. And if there's hundreds of thousands of videos of murders being broadcast across the world, someone's got to pay attention to this. Yeah. I, they will pay attention Post. to it. The Washington Post, Kara, has a great piece today on YouTube specifically where they talk to the yeah. chief product officer. And the video of the attack in New Zealand was popping up. They would take it down, and a new one it was one per one second. second was getting yep. uh, reloaded. And I wonder if, if the whole argument we made a few months ago or a year ago that humans, mm -hmm. if you threw enough humans at this and curated it out of existence, is that done? Is that essentially hopeless? I, I think hundreds of, look, if you take down 80% and there's still hundreds of thousands of videos and they pop up every second on whatever platform, it's not just YouTube and Facebook, by the way, it's on Reddit, it's on everywhere. It's on every one of these platforms that is, allows unfettered editorial posting. I mean, that's really what's going on. It's not even editorial. People just post them up. And so the question is, should these platforms exist? And I, or should there be tools in place to stop them? And that's, I don't know. That's the problem. Is What I've been trying to say is this may be overwhelmingly difficult question. Should we have these products at all? I think that's one of the things you're talking about. And of course, then everyone will say everybody should have free speech. Everyone should do what they want. But here's the result is that these murders are being broadcast in real time across the globe and these companies that are doing the broadcasting don't have control of them. It just, I don't know what to say, honestly. I don't know what to do. Um, but they better yeah. figure it out before something else happens. Yeah, Kara, I mean, we're sitting here grappling with these questions. I'm sure lawmakers and regulators are as well. What would your message to them be? My message to them, and I'm talking to a lot of them, is that you've got to figure out some way to, to put these products out to people at the same time protect the people that, I mean, these are victims of murder, like horrible mass murder. This is just not, should not happen in, in any society and it should not be allowed to happen. And you cannot control people from posting them. So what do you do? I don't know, but, but the legislators have to think really hard about what they want to do about these platforms uh, going forward. And this is just a start, you know, this didn't even happen before I wrote this column, but this is just another stark example of the difficulty uh, of, of monitoring them. There, it's, just, it's, just, it's beyond belief the amount of videos that went up uh, on, a, on this horrible tragedy.
yeah, still trying to wrap my mind around yeah. exactly what that means, what that says about this platform. Um, Kara, thanks. Thank you.